What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. And before we start, as you can see, we have this man back. Before he starts talking, make sure you download One Football. If you're looking for a great football app, then go over to One Football. One Football have not just got your latest rumours, latest videos, and latest news about your favourite teams, but they tell you about the entire Premier League and football pyramid. So get over to OneFootball and download it now in the link below. Quick app, do it now. We welcome John back to the Blue Boys Network tonight. John, how <sighs> are you, sir? First and foremost, obviously, you've had a, a, a pretty shitty couple of weeks, so everyone on the streams are wishing you love and condolences and everything. Obviously, me and you have still spoke a lot and... Uh, it's been rough for you, we know, and I'm glad you're here tonight. It's a big game, Everton v Chelsea. But more importantly today, it's your 77th birthday today, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> That's 77, 46th birthday today. 46 years ago, this specimen was born, this fine specimen was born. And we only wish that your dad had wiped you off with a cloth. Um, Obviously, the best bit of me runs army mum's leg. Absolutely. Explains why you're a bit short of a few brain cells. Um, Everton <laughs> Everton go up against Chelsea this weekend to, to late kickoff. What's your thoughts on that, bad boy, then? Well, I prefer it to be an early kickoff to get the fucking shit show that it's going to be out the way, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I've missed being on the channel because I haven't been able to rant. Um, and I said to you last week, we're not Everton Football Club. That's, this team is not as good as what it thinks it is. There's a lot of fans out there who are still wearing the blue tinted specs. Let me tell you, we're nowhere near as good as what you people think we are. Not everyone, there's a, but a lot of people are thinking, you know, it's a blip. It's not a blip when you've only won one in seven. For me, in this rant, Ancelotti doesn't get away with it. He's playing round pegs and square holes. Play players in their own positions don't leave players out of the squad when they can come in who are fit to play in Kenny, in Konku, Gordon. Bring them in and play them instead of playing the likes of your Fabian Delphs at left back. You know, I said this to Michael, and apparently Michael said it on the stream, the best thing that come out of that game last week was Fabian Delph going off injured because if he stays on that pitch, we don't get a point. We're nowhere near good enough to, to to challenge for Europe, in my opinion. I ranted the other day at Michael after the game. I still feel the same now. I can see Everton being a mid-table mid team this season. Yeah, we knew it was a, a season of transition. But, you know, the wank fest went off when we signed to Corey, when we signed Alan, when we signed Hamez. And for me, I'm going to say it, and I'll probably get shot down for this by some of you, they haven't improved the team. They have not improved the team. They need better players around them. You're not going to get the best out of Hammers when he's got Gilfie Sigurdsson sitting on the bench who's coming on to play alongside him. You've got Tom Davis there. You've got a manager who's not playing players in the position, which I said before. Just play the players in position where they should be. Bring these players in who are fit to play and go back to 4-4-2 because it started you know, at the beginning of the season when we were the only team, I think, in the country unbeaten and we were playing 4-4-2. And for some strange reason, yeah, I know we've had injuries, but as I keep saying, there's players to come in to, you know, to allow us to go back to that 4-4-2 formation that worked for us. He has to against Chelsea. I'm expecting nothing out of Chelsea. I'm going to say it now. Yeah, it is negative, but I want to, I want a lot of people to realise that we're not good enough. Yeah, and you know, and everyone's pissed off when, you know, we were poor against Burnley when Leeds beat us. Yeah, and after a couple of days, it normally does die down and you're looking forward to the next game. I'm not looking forward to this Chelsea game. I don't know where our next point's coming from, never mind our next win in these next three fixtures. Yeah, we may get something against Arsenal, but we have to dramatically improve. Otherwise, we won't get nothing against them neither, in my opinion, Michael. Yeah, look, I, I I sit there and sort of I was one of those fans with the blue tinted glasses. Certainly, not necessarily 
last week, week before, week before that. But when we first hit that blip, I put a lot of it on Carlo Ancelotti and his tactics. And, you know, for example, we had the Southampton game after the Liverpool game. We played really bad. We played really bad. Then we mm. had the Newcastle game. We played really bad. Then we played against Manchester United. And for the first 20 minutes, I thought, ah, yes, Everton are back. You know, the, yeah. this is the Everton that we had the first four games of the season. We weren't great against Liverpool in the derby, but we never are. We're back. This is Everton are going on the right trajectory again. Two defeats in the first nine games. Happy days, no problem. The run got worse. And actually, if you really do put it in perspective, Fulham could have beaten us. Yeah. You know, it was it was only because we stepped up when we did and they, they missed a penalty that we ended up getting something out that game. Now you're right in saying we shouldn't be negative. We should not be sitting here negative about Everton. But what well, yeah, but what's the point, Michael? People know what this channel is about. And I'm not going to sit yeah. here and you're not going to sit here building our hopes up and saying it like it's not. Mm. If, 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 we, if we feel negative about Everton Football Club, about Carlo Ancelotti, about these players, we're going to say it. And, you know, we will get shot down. It won't be the first time we've been shot down on the channel. You know, you were getting shot down before mm. I come onto the channel. I'm saying it how it is. Yeah. We, we had a conversation I think Carlo Ancelotti's been in charge now for something like 30 odd games. We were in agreement that out of them 30 games, there's at least 10 games where the manager's got his team selection wrong, where he's got yeah. his formation wrong, where he's got his tactics wrong, where he's got his formation wrong. I'm not sitting here saying sack the man. I will never ever say sack Carlo Ancelotti. It doesn't matter how poor we get because we have got one of the best managers in the world, one of the most successful managers in the world. It's not as if he doesn't know how to do it in the Premier League because he's done it before. But I don't know what it is, why he's not picking the likes of your Gordons, your Unconcus, your Kenny. Yeah, I'm not Kenny's biggest fan, but he's available to play at right back. So play him, play him, play the players in the right positions because I'm, I'm telling you, something's not right. In my opinion, whether it's in the squad, whether it's within the four walls, I don't know. What Anthony Gordon's done wrong, I don't know. How can the likes of your Tom Davises, your Fabian Delfs be getting in before them, whether it's on the bench, whether it's starting? What has gone wrong? For me, I, I said this to you, maybe I'm wrong. Carlo Ancelotti does not like giving youth a go. And I, I think you... You you um, agreed with me and, and you said something about, was it Napoli or, or whatever he, he left the team? Yeah, with so, there. So, yeah, so the, the feedback at Napoli was that he weren't prepared to play younger players and he was very stubborn in his ways. He didn't have a great time at Napoli. And look, again, I'm just going to alliterate. I actually do not necessarily blame Carlo Ancelotti for all of the things that have gone wrong by, by any stretch of anyone's imagination. This is the biggest job Carlo Ancelotti has ever had because Everton yeah. are in such, you know, I'll, I'll say it, they've got a shit mentality in the board because, you know, we haven't had a winning mentality since the 80s. So he's got to change that. He's got shit players that have been built up, spent millions of pounds on, 500 million pounds in five years that are absolute dross. You know, coming yeah. to the end of their contract, we're never going to get resale value, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Carlo Ancelotti's got a massive, massive job and we've got to stick with him. He is, he is the best yeah. man I, I, available. But, but, as you rightly say, and as I said in the stream, and as I've said on Twitter and I've said in different places, just because I do not agree with Carlo Ancelotti doesn't mean I don't want him sacked. And this is the argument that a lot of Everton fans no, sort of say. Like, they all they say they say likewise. They, they, yeah, they say, they say, oh, you're just moaning at the manager, you want him sacked. I don't want him sacked. But no. what I want is in my mind common sense decisions. You know, yeah. at the start of the season, we appeared to play an orthodox 4-4-2. James was on the right. He was on the right when Kieran Gibbs got sent off for West Brom over on the right hand side of the pitch, over the left hand side of the pitch, on the wing at Goodison. You know, he played as a winger, cutting in on his left foot, being able to spray that ball. Now he's been playing in a 4 3 3. I don't think Rashalison is effective. I don't think Rashalison is effective. I think the formation that he played against, against Burnley 
as I say, the best thing that happened in that game, and I hate to say this because, you know, a player got injured and I never wish that on anyone, but Dolph's hamstring going gave Everton more balance because well, it brought we, Godfrey we went 4 4 2. And we went 4 4 2. So, what I want to say is Everton go into this game against Chelsea very simply playing a 4 4 2 with a left back, a right back. Now, again, we'll talk about the team in a minute. There has been games where I have questioned decisions, but my issue is, and every Evertonian's issue is, you can't necessarily question Carlo yet. We can't. Another thing I want to mention, I know, I, and I know you're going to mention it in a minute, and you have mentioned our signings, right? If Everton aren't playing great, James usually isn't in the game. If Everton aren't playing great, Richarlison's not usually in the game. So then you look back and you look at your midfield and you look at your players who are going to get the ball, grab the game by the scruff of the neck and get the ball forward. You know, and I hate saying it, but you used to see that with a Frank Lampard at Chelsea. You used to see it with, with, with Gerrard at Liverpool. If Liverpool were playing bad, you'd see Gerrard try and get on the ball and change the game. Scholes, he was the same. Scholes, he was the same. I look at Everton's midfield, and I love Alan. Alan's top of the tackles charts. I think, bar a couple of games, he's had an OK season. Can't, you know, bearing in mind he's come from a foreign league, first time playing in England. I've got no reservations. The one who's disappointed me is Decora. Yeah. He knows the Premier League, and what has scared me a little bit. And I'm not saying he's a he's not a good player. He he, he is a good paper player on paper, but at for Watford. me, yeah. And, that, and that's my issue. You know, he's gone from being a big fish in a small pond where a lot of Watford fans actually thought Kapuai was better. I said this to you. I can't see why we bought both Alan and Decore. It doesn't work playing But we were both, both chuffed at the time. We were both we chuffed were. at the time. And that's the issue. That's the issue. Well, you see, this is another thing I said to you going back to the young kids. Now, he's given Ben Godfrey a go. I got, well, I won't guarantee it, but I'm pretty, pretty sure if Ben Godfrey wouldn't have cost 30 million quid, he would not be playing. He no. would not be playing. No, he's no. only playing because of his price tag, because Carlo Ancelotti doesn't want the fans on his back when we're conceding goals, left, right and centre. One clean sheet in the Premier League this season against Spurs. There's no way he's going to drop Ben Godfrey because straight away the fans will go, well, how can you leave a £30 million player on the bench? Yeah. So, I, you know, I get Ben Godfrey playing. I didn't see the game last week. You know, I haven't seen much of Everton lately because of what's been going on. Apparently, when, when he moved to the full-back position, he played really well. Oh, he did. But, at, left, at, left, at left back, yeah. he was solid, commanding. He was very vocal. That's what I liked about him, to be fair. He he was giving shit to the people in front of him. You know, but he Which wasn't is, scared yeah. to have a go at Richarlison for tracking back and things like that. I like I, that. I, 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 I want to see us go back to 4-4-2. And the team I've picked, I'm not saying it'll beat Chelsea because I, I don't know how we beat Chelsea, to be fair, Michael. I really, really don't. I, I can't see, and again, it's being negative, and I do apologise for it, but when you've won one in seven, and then you come up against Chelsea, who for me, have got one of the best squads in the Premier League, bar none. They'll win they, the title. In my they, opinion, they, Chelsea will yeah, win the title. Yeah, you know, if you look at Man City and you look at Chelsea, Man City have always had two players for, you know, for each position. Chelsea are getting that way now. Yeah. You know, and for me, I agree with you. They're going to be up there without a shadow of a doubt. They will be challenging. I don't, again, I'm, I'm sorry for this. I just don't see Everton getting out of the game. You know, no, it, no, I, I, I was I in the ballet. I was in the ballet. And as soon as I pressed submit, I was thinking, what the fuck have I, why have I done that? Why, why? you know, because I'm not, I'm not looking forward to watching Everton at the minute, Michael. And that is poor when it's not even Christmas. But I think the reason for that is when we were on the unbeaten run at the beginning of the season, our hopes were sky high. You know, me and you were tongue in cheek. Oh, we're, we're going to win, win the, the league. Lot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we were. We're the FA Cup, the Cardiff you know, Cup, Carabao Cup Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> but we were doing watch-alongs and we were singing, we're going to win the league. And, you know, we, we yeah. were buzzing. And 
then as you say, it it's turned it, and 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 it's not as if it's really being gradual. You know, you go on that unbeaten run, and then both we've won one and seven. No, yeah, yeah. And then we've got Chelsea, we've got Leicester, and we've got Arsenal. Arsenal. And Man United in the cup. You know, it's not it's not a good time at the minute, you know, to, to be an Everton fan. And going back to the three players I named before, I don't get why we signed Corey and Alan. I don't get why we bought two players who are similar. I'm going to slag Hammers off a bit here. He's world class, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're all made up and I'm still made up. He plays for Everton Football Club. Let's see what he's like when there's ice on the ground and it's freezing. You know, because if we're not playing well, as you said before, he doesn't play well. If we're not playing well and we're playing away somewhere and it's fucking freezing, it's pissing down, it's minus three, the wind's blowing everywhere. If we're not playing well, you won't see him. Mm. You won't see him. And listen, he's a fantastic player, Michael. Do you know what I mean? And we are lucky to have him. But he needs better players around him. And while he hasn't got, you know, Ancelotti hasn't got the squad that he wants, while we're low on confidence, while he's playing players out of position, while he's not playing the right formation, you're not going to see the best of Hammers Rodriguez and an Everton shirt. No, I completely agree with you. Right, let's let's go through our team. I think it's fair to say that my team will not start on on Saturday. But same here, same you- here. But this this, you... this is the team that should start, in my opinion. Yeah, this is this is this is my team. So uh, I go uh, Jordan. No, I don't actually. I don't. I go Olsen in goal. Uh, left back, I go Unconquer. In the middle of the park, I go Godfrey and Keane. On right back, I go John Joe Kenny. In midfield, I go with Richarlison on the left. I'll go... No, I don't. No, I don't. I'll go with... I've wrote this down. Hang on. I've Hang on. wrote Fuck it down it. as well. Start. Start again. You give your team and I'll cut my first bit out. Right. Well, I go for Olsen. And I'm telling you now why. For the simple fact of the matter, that goal that Burnley scored last week. I know this is our team now, but I just wanted to mention this. There wasn't any power in the shot. How Jordan Pickford got beat from there is, is beyond me. So I'm going for Olsen in goal. I'm going to put yeah. a left back in a left back position on Konku. Yeah. I'm going to play Ben Godfrey at centre half with Mason Olgate. Very, very young line up at the back, this. Yeah. And I go with John Joe Kenny. Again, I'm not as big as fan, but he's a right back, so fucking play him there. <laughs> I go for Gordon on the left. Yeah. I go for Gomez and Allen in the middle, and I put Hamez on the right and Richardson and Lewin up front. I'm not saying that team's good enough to beat Chelsea. But it's youthful. It's got skill. It's got energy with Allen in there. Gordon will tackle back. You know, you've got players who are playing in the right positions who will want to put a performance in to keep that position. And then the two up top, you've got Richarlison and Lewin, who when they have played together early on in the season, look what happened. We were the only unbeaten team yeah, yeah. In, the, in the country. So that's my yeah. team. It's very youthful. But... Play fucking players in position. Yeah, so I'll go Olsen, left back on Konku, uh, Godfrey and Keane in the middle with John Joe Kenny at right back. I'll go with a midfield three of Allen, Mason Holgate, Andre Gomez and front three. I'll go Richarlison, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And Rodriguez. Now, I have literally just said 10 minutes ago, play 4 4 2. And there's a reason I've just gone 4 3 3. Because literally, literally, I'm going eight against three. So, I, so what I'm saying is that it's any one time. Chelsea. Fuck that. It, it, it is dangerous. But what I'm saying is, I don't want our full backs overrunning. Overlapping. I don't really want our midfield carrying the ball. I want Dominic Calvert Lewin to win that. I want Sam Allardyce football in this Chelsea game. I want that ball going from fucking Olsen all the way up to Calvert Lewin off his chest into Richarlison and Rodriguez. I don't want anyone pushing up because if I can park the bus with eight players behind the ball, we might get a draw out this game. 
The only, and the only we reason might why be I go with... to a bit of a counter when Richarlison and uh, and Dominic Calvert Lewin are coming back because because I'd leave Rodriguez up there. He hasn't got the legs, the pace to carry that ball, whereas Calvert Lewin and Richarlison have. So I, think I, leave, I, leave I think Rodriguez what you're going to find, Michael, the way Chelsea play, they'll mark man mark Hammers. So if you leave him up there on his own. Yeah, but I expect that's what I mean. When the ball's in our half, I'm hoping with Charleston and Calvert Lewin are going to carry the ball forward. I don't want our midfield doing it. I want I want to bypass our midfield. The only time I want our midfield in action is when we're defending. And the reason why I don't play Decore and I play Holgate is because he's actually shit. Mason Holgate can pass. Because I've got to be honest, I've been very concerned by the passing of Decore in pretty just much fans every and game. I yeah, passes I've to the opposition. Con- a ten-yard pass. I've been quite concerned by his passing, and I know, I know. For example, you know, Alan gives the ball away. Fuck that. Alan mm. gives the ball away against Burnley because he passed it to Corey. Was flat-footed, couldn't get there. Ball goes into whoever scored for Burnley. I can't remember who it was, and and Pickford can't get there because he's too short. I get that. I know it, but to Corey. Twenty-five million pounds at this moment in time hasn't justified that price tag, and I'm not saying he's not gonna. I'm saying he's got plenty of time to adjust. I give him every time. I, I like to give every player the benefit of the doubt, and that's fine. Like the it, thing it, it is, gets though, too long when it's a couple of years down the track, and we're still on about people like Tom look, Davies and stuff. Well, you can't go a couple of years down the line with the likes of Decore when he's done it in the Premier League anyway. So you know, well, but, that is an issue. But yeah, but the thing is, do do you agree that you can't play Alan and Decore in the same team? I, I don't, I don't get that. I, th- I think it's very difficult because Decore, in my mind, was brought in to be the ball carrying midfielder, and actually, I Alan's seen... doing everything for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I mean, Alan. Alan, Alan can tackle. He yeah, can pass. He can tackle, you bring the ball pass. out. Yeah, Decore and, and, does and the goal. Yeah, and even even on even on I think it was on Saturday, Alan gets the ball and he carries it and he, and he I think I'm sure he takes a shot against the Burnley did, players. Yeah. It goes wide. Yeah. But yeah. you know, Alan's picking the ball up, beating people, trying to make something happen. I he's can't trying. say the same. Yeah, he's I can't trying. say the same. I can't say the same and to call right. I just can't at the minute. And maybe dropping him's a bit of a boot up the arse. Maybe. Well, the thing is, though, just dropping these players who are fucking on thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds a week, fucking give them a kick up the arse anymore, well, Michael? Who, who knows? Who knows? But you know, who knows? Because I'm telling be... you something now. You drop fucking soft arse in goal. That wouldn't give him a boot up the arse because he's not arsed him. He's not arsed. No, no, no. And he, he's probably expecting to start on Saturday. And, that, no, and well, that's he, the thing. he will be. He will be mm. because he's that cocksure of himself. You know, that he expects to play every week. And this is why. Give Olsen a go. Just give him a go. Can't be any fucking worse. He might give the defence confidence, Michael, because that clowning goal does not give that back three, back four, however many what fucking formation Ancelotti wants to play at the back. Doesn't give them confidence. Right. When you when you look at left back and you see Fabian Dell for left back, what confidence does that give the other fucking nine, ten players? Oh, well, it, well, it, doesn't give, it doesn't give the fans any confidence. It just, well, because these players know, Michael, you should be playing players in the right position. It's not hard. You've got Nkonku and you've got fucking John Joe Kenny. We ain't even in the squad. We were crying out for a right back and a fucking left back and they're probably sitting at home watching it on a fucking IPTV box. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, I do, yeah. I do, fucking hell. Right, Play players in the then. fucking right position. Last question. <laughs> Fucking John Ancelotti. <laughs> Fucking hell. I play players where they should be playing. Score prediction, please. 3-1 three, three, to Leeds. To Leeds? To Leeds? To Leeds? Chelsea? To Chelsea? To Chelsea? <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. 3-1 to Chelsea. 3-1 yeah, to I'll, Chelsea. I'll, Lampard, I'll, I'll, tore, Lampard tore Andre Flo and fucking Zola to get the goals. <laughs> Oh, I'll go. Uh, I'll go Chelsea two one. We'll concede more than two. <laughs> With him in goal, Michael. <laughs> right, 
Do you want, I'll just give you some quick stats while we're just here. No. So Everton have conceded 18 goals this season in 11 Premier League games. That was worse than uh, Marco Silva's 11 games in charge. I don't think he works on defence. I think he's another <laughs> fucking... Honest to God, I think he's another. <laughs> um, it, it, what, Martinez? Martinez never worked oh, on the defence. I, I can't do that. I, I, look, I love Carlo. I love Carlo. I, oh, listen, only... I, let me just fucking reiterate something here, by the way, to the people who are watching this video. I don't want the man sacked. I just want to see players come in who are fit to play where we need them positions filling. Just, it's not fucking hard. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Fucking hell. Um, right, okay. Well, guys, that is it. Thank you ever so much for watching. John, thank you ever so much for returning for a preview. Obviously, now your hours have changed a little bit. We might be able to get John on a little bit more, maybe, Touchwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, as I say, up to now, I haven't got my Saturday shift. If it's an early one like it has been, I'll be on for the watch along as well. And that, and that's what we want. We want you on the watch along. And and equally, John, have a fantastic rest of your birthday, mate. What have you yeah. What have you had today, Nice? Um, I haven't opened them all yet. To be fair, Michael. Have you not? <laughs> no. Oh, I, I, I did get. I, I've got to put the trackies, a pair of trackies, a pair of trainees. And she did go out for something else for me today, but I haven't seen it yet because I haven't long been oh, on from where. I understand, yeah, I understand. Cheeky, yeah. cheeky. I'm it's sorry, just a bit yeah, shit. Yeah. It's a bit shit, isn't it, that you've got your birthday one day and a funeral the next, fucking hell. Yeah. And then, uh, and yeah. then you've got and then you've got Everton the day after, <laughs> fucking hell. I mean, it's I'm fucking flying. <laughs> fucking hell. John won't be here by Monday. <laughs> fucking hell. Honest to God. Oh, right, guys. Uh, peace. See you later.